Hi, I'm Judy Mandel, and this is my new book. It's out today, and I can't actually believe that it's coming out um, October 1st, 2022. I thought the best way to launch, to do a book launch, would be with my boy, Justin. He's over here. He's waving. And because he's always been part of this, he's always part of all my writing. He's my first reader. He's my first editor. And with this book, it was very close to our family. So it meant a great deal to me to have him be part of it. Um, and so what I did at first was I made him a small mini manuscript to take with him because he was taking the subway. And he could take it on the subway and put it in his backpack and mark it up. And, and he did, he marked it up and it was the, his edits were invaluable to me. He made me dig deeper into our family. He made me talk more about my experience, which you know I tend to ignore. Um, so everything he wrote was just gold for me. And, and truly, you know, he's the reason that I write anything. And, you know, especially something, you know, as deep into our family as this book and, and even my last book. Um, so Justin, Justin Butler, we have different last names, but that's okay. Because we know, we know we're, we're related. We're related. <laughs> I know he's mine. So thank you. Thanks for doing this, honey. I really appreciate uh, it. I really yeah, appreciate it. Really the, the little travel manuscript you made was adorable. It was I still have it, of course. It at like 40%. It was like a little Bible, but. And I, you know, I made it so it would open and you could fold it back. I had little spirals, I thought. It worked it was, out well. It was very, very precious. Yeah. <laughs> Something also, I know you said that I'm your, your first reader and first editor, and but maybe I'm not your last one because maybe I lose steam. Maybe. <laughs> no, I had, I had a few. <laughs> and, and, as you get further along in it yeah but you gave me the the bones you helped me get the bones of this and that was uh truly invaluable was i couldn't have done it without you Thanks. well all all the bones were there we we're just i don't know we we're doing something to the bones <laughs> so mike i'm gonna ask you one question and then you can ask me more questions you know which you always do anyway so i do just I I just want to know how you felt when you you started reading it, and when you know when you and when you finally you know saw the final one. Um. Yeah. Well, first of all, really, congratulations, Judy, mom, Judy, mom. Thanks, honey. Mom, Judy. Um, you've really been working on this for a long time, and it feels really feels really great that it's out there now. Um. Yeah, um, I think when I, maybe even before I first read it, I remember just feeling, uh, I think I felt like nervous, like anxious about like the process because I, I just knew it was a hard thing that you were setting out to do. Um, and like nervous for you writing it, but also it's a, there's a lot of, like for your experience, but there's a lot of complicated things that come up when writing something about family or someone um, with addiction or someone who's died. And um, it felt, um, yeah, it just felt like a very um, sensitive, tender thing you're about to do. Um, and yeah. I think I think I felt protective of you, but also like, right, how would the rest of the family feel? How might other people feel who um whose story might like be similar to Cheryl's? Um but yeah. So I remember first I think feeling that. <laughs> and you, you have kind of a different even a different perspective could be because you're a social worker and you've worked in the prison system in New York for quite a number of years now. I yeah. don't even know how many years, five years. Six years. Six. Oh, six oh, wow. and yeah. Um, so you have that you have that perspective too, which is different. So you might relate yeah. to it a little bit differently too. Right. And maybe part of me, I was like, why is Judy writing this book about substance use? <laughs> like, who who the hell are you? Who the hell are you? 
which and, I often I often ask myself. Right, and I actually that is a very special thing about your um, your ethos in this book and your your presence in the story is that you're constantly asking that question of yourself as the writer and a character in the story, like why am I why am I writing this? Who who the hell am I to write this? Um, and you keep even when you're asking the bigger questions in the book about substance use and recovery and um, just people's life experiences, you keep returning to your your unique experience and Cheryl's and our families and, you know, you you keep landing on the truth that it is valuable because it's it's your story. It it's part of Cheryl's story. And, and I even, tried to look to I tried to look to the experts for the things I didn't know. I, th right. you know, I, I realized there was so much that I didn't know. Um, yeah. So, you know, I think the reading that I, that I did in the research really helped me too. Right. Which you, which you recommended, I believe, in the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah, actually, maybe I, rem I remember recommending some, some things to read um, about about substance use and uh, maybe jail recovery, whatever. And then I remember visiting you at at your house and you had an entire floor. The floor was covered with books about addiction and treatment. And uh, I think I maybe gave you three titles and you maybe bought like 45 books. Yeah, <laughs> probably sounds about right. Yeah, sounds about right. I remember they're actually organized in themes. There was like, there was a stack from doctors. There was a stack from relatives of survivors or, yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. You you did a lot of research. Um, old books, new books, you know, yeah. new new trends and old, you know, theories and. Yeah, yeah. when you, when you, wait, I know I didn't fully answer your, your question, but I'll, I'll get back to it. But when you started doing that, uh, like delving into like this really giant world of um, substance use treatment and recovery and just that whole universe. Did yeah. how did how did that feel once you were like you know kind of got your hands on, um, yeah, some of that writing and research and. At first, it was it was overwhelming. I mean, it was I think it was overwhelming because I realized there was. Um, so much I didn't know. And, you know, the more I, I learned, the more I needed to, to read and understand and, and then try to apply it to, you know, my experience. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was the hard part. And, and, and then you start thinking, I wish I had known this before, which was a lot of the feeling like, I wish I had done this before. Why didn't I do this before? Right. And that, that's, you know, kind of the kind of um, feeling that you have to try to work through and I think I think that's probably why I write is to you know work through understanding right I feel like that could have maybe been another title of the book where right? like I wish I had known this before or why yeah. I didn't why didn't I do this before <laughs> yeah uh, yeah so I'm hoping that because you know I I did this or maybe there are other people that it will help that haven't done this that are in the midst of this crisis with a loved one. So I'm hoping maybe, maybe I, they find it at the right time, I yeah. hope. I remember when we were, we were like talking about the early stages of the book and doing edits, um, like you, like you just mentioned, one of the, one of the things I like, I wanted to hear more of in the book and maybe asked you about was like your, experience and um like your self-blame and self-critique and guilt and frustration that you felt during it um and uh yeah i was just asking or wanting to know um how that felt to like i guess be asked by me reading your draft to include yourself more in the story mm -hmm. um i remember we had like a little bit of a debate or back and forth about like it being your story, Cheryl's story, where you like, um, 
where you're allowed to exist in the story and what like the real purpose is. And I remember mm -hmm. asking to hear more about your like self critique and or like, you know, yeah. guilt, regret, everything in it. Yeah. Well, it felt like it needed it needed to be in it needed to be in the book. Um, and I just wanted to make sure it didn't crowd out, you know, the rest of what I thought was important to have in the book, which was mostly, you know, Cheryl's Cheryl's journey also. And, you know, what what she had what she had gone through and how it related to to us and our family. And, you know, um, that's one of the questions I have for you now that I'm turning it back is about the generational trauma piece, the transgenerational, intergenerational. Um, I know there are different terms for it, you know, which I believe resulted from mostly from the plane crash and um, Cheryl's mother being very badly burned in that plane crash and the trauma that, that she went through all of her life. Yeah. Um, so I wondered how you, you felt about about that piece of it. That was that was something that um, was a revelation to me to, to understand more about how, you know, mm -hmm. the things in our past are part of who we are. Yeah. And, you know, in and part of you. So, you know, that was something that I wanted you to read. Yeah. Um, and so how did you feel about that? Um, I think some of the things you, um included in the book or found out yourself for the first time um about especially about Cheryl's life or um some of them were difficult to know about but I was really I think grateful for it too um to just have more more nuance and detail and under attempt to understand her a little bit more um as complicated as that is because it wasn't her telling you and i know that's some of the like um internal conflict you had and like some of what you know i think i felt trying to be like your editor but also like a family member and like where is the line of what is okay to include and um i feel like you know that that kind of gets back to the question of like whose story is it and um you know writing this and doing some research about like specifically Cheryl not just like substance use and everything is like there's limits to that too it's like this is inherently a um a partial story you know, because there's only so much you can know. And there's, you know, the most important perspective, Cheryl's is like, largely missing. Like, it's very, like a really special strength of the book that you have, I think, um, letters from her and quotes and um, texts and posts. And like that, we do get in her head there. And then still, I know you felt when you're writing it that you're like, this is just all questions this is you even have like a section in the book about that like this is just more questions and, and even the letters you know there i only included a few of the letters really and there were there were many letters so they they kind of informed my you know view of what she was going through too yeah you know there were so it was like related to that knowing like how incomplete of a story it has to be when she she can't tell her side of it or can't you know fill in all of the you know countless mm -hmm. gaps and questions um how do you think she would feel reading it um i actually you know i've been asking myself that often now especially since i'm you know i'm starting to talk about the book more with people and um mm -hmm. you know i i i do wonder how she would feel i i kind of feel she'd be happy with it you know it gives a rounded view it makes it makes her life, you know, have some meaning, even though it was, it was a terrible, a terrible end for her. Um, but I, I think she would be pleased. I think mm -hmm. so. I think I gave it, gave her, 
herself in it, that yeah. it, it pictured her, not just another person, you know, with substance use disorder. But, yeah. and also that, that points to the fact that people, I hope people start looking at their loved ones that way, that they're still, they're still that same person. And she always was, she right. was more, she was more than this substance use. Of you course. Know, it yeah. was, she was much more than that. And, you know, I hope that, that this, I hope the book relates that. And I, and I hope, I hope she would be happy with it. Um, her sister seems to be, you know, okay with it too. You know, we're, we've had a little rough time, but we're, you know, now talking so much more. And um, she seems to, to believe that it's also a good thing. Yeah, I think I was thinking about her the most, actually, when you were thinking um, Me too. You know, about how she would receive it and, and everything. Yep. And yeah, and right. I, also, if Cheryl hated it, I would want to, like, I would, I, I would just want to hear how she feels about it. <laughs> and I, uh, I hate that. I hate that we can't know. Like, I do um, too. I do too. But, but right, it would, it would even be great to hear her, like, give you. Argue, argue with all, me. All the, Correct me. <laughs> yeah, all the reasons that she, like, doesn't right. like it. Or, yeah, exactly. I mean, I do find out more information almost every day. So it's uh it's almost i could almost write another chapter <laughs> of the book yeah it's uh so that's a difficult part there's there's so much more to know and, and understand and you know even even some of the language in the book i would change now that i you know i try not to use the word addiction i try to use the word word substance use disorder because it's got much less stigma for the community and i i wish i had done that that's one thing i you know i definitely yeah regret you know of the book but um i can't help that now and i can only help it as i talk about it as i talk yeah. and you know so from your from your your perspective and you know your experiences with the prison system i mean how do you feel about what cheryl went through with her prison experience yeah it was um it was really wild at the time, just like we, you know, I, I work at, I work at Rikers Island, the jail in New York City. So jail system, not the prison system, but um, just, you know, with all of our patients that we work with really closely on the mental health unit I used to work on. Um, and so, so many people on that unit who have serious mental illness also deal with substance use. And um, it was just, um, it was really just a surprising, like, real life exposure to someone's post release experience that you were doing. It was like a, a wild parallel at the time. It's like mm -hmm. we have to get released and we do our best to, like, you know, connect with their caseworkers or sort of be like a transitional, um, you know, like, presence and do as many handoffs to other people that can help them in the community as possible but then like you're sort of like the story like getting someone's perspective like you were you were there with Cheryl like dealing with you know the fucking bank account issues or like you know the jobs housing yeah. and the transitional housing place she was at was like horrific or like the story about the bullet hole in the um kitchen uh it was just very it was kind of jarring but also like a really useful window into like what that life is what that moment in someone's life is like hi phineas hi how are you you're gonna be one so soon this is my grandson phineas so he's now he's the star of the show <laughs> Of course. So uh, we just want to finish our our little talk with with Finn involved in this. So he'll, how should we he'll, close? He'll give his two cents. So yeah, a question I have. Hi. Is uh, so we're saying like how how she would maybe receive the book, how she would feel about it if she read it. Um, right. Which which to me feels totally secondary to like I don't know just 
in that scenario, if she were to read the book, it would mean that we were in this fantasy world, we're hanging out with her. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Which would be. That would be nice. And amazing. Um, nice. What, what would you say to her? If, or what is something you would like to ask her or talk to her about if, if you were able to? Right now? Um, I'm sure there. I guess I would ask her if she was aware of, you know, the complexity of the, the issue for herself, if if she knew what she was up against, and you know, if there was any um, any of the services accessible that she really needed, which I don't think there was. You know, I don't think she was helped with medically assisted treatment at all. Um, I know she didn't get counseling. Um, I know she didn't get help with her social services that she needed. Um, and those are, those are the three things that I think, that I think help that can yeah. lead to recovery. And I don't think she had any of them. And I, I, I really think in that case, it's a failure of the system and, you know, of our, our social system and yeah. our, our government, frankly. Yeah. So... I wonder if some part of you also would want to ask her what you could have done differently. Oh, I, yes, I definitely sh would have wanted to ask her that. And, yeah. you know, I, um, yeah, would I would tell her that I was sorry I didn't know more. And I'm, I'm sorry I didn't know what I, what I should have been offering her, but I also have to understand that she had to really want to, and I'm not sure and that's why I named the book White Flag. I'm not sure she really waved, waved her white flag in surrender to the fact that she needed help. You know, she did turn down help, you know, several times. And so that's another, that's another part of it. But I'd certainly, I wish I could talk to her about it. Yeah. Well, and like with a white flag, like what that means for different people or like, you know, having to wave it multiple times or like, you know, maybe. Right. Maybe people not really, really seeing or hearing your white flag is. Yeah. That's true too. And um, would you have gotten another chance if they had given her Narcan at the scene? That's, right. you know, something that really weighs on my mind. And that's upsetting to think about. Yeah. It's upsetting to think about. Right. Part. There's a well. It's you know. It's not a lighthearted book, but I'm 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 glad that the story is there, and I think it might do some good. I think it will. But, I know. But I do like to see Finn's belly. So. <laughs> uh, our last. Our last question is. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> how do you feel when people say? Judy was writing this book cathartic. How, um, do, you, how do you? You know, I, I understand them saying that. And, and certainly, you know, I do find answers through writing. Um, and as a writer, I, I hope it's more than that. I hope it's more than just um, working through my own stuff, you know, through writing. I, ho I hope it was transformed, you know, into something more than, uh, you know, into a piece of art and that's that's always my hope when I write something you know whether it's about myself or fiction or essay or whatever is that it's it's I don't want to be just you know as I said to you throwing up on the page it's not that's not my that's not my goal um so that's I think that's how it makes me feel and I'm always I always feel like a connotation when people say, was this cathartic? They mean like, they kind of are implying closure. Like, did right. you right. did you get it out of your system? Did you finally process this? Um, and it, I feel like it's a really misattuned way of talking about it all. Like grief, I, I, just like the struggle of addiction and um, similar to how people are like, are, are you clean? Are you sober? Are you cured? Uh, did you hit rock bottom? <laughs> like, you know, it's like uh, nothing is as simple as that. 
nothing is as simple as that and especially or when, linear as that or linear as that it's a, there's uh it changes i think it you know as in any kind of grief i think it uh changes your perspective it changes how you look at everything and i don't, I don't think there's i don't think there's an end i think there's a change right in, in how you how you look at it and like you said you could keep writing this book and that's like the point. i could i'm still you know things are still happening and i'm still learning things i'm still learning things about cheryl right um, so that's uh you know that's the way it goes I'm so happy to see Finn. This is a nice way to close this. I appreciate you bringing him on. Hi, Finn. How you doing? Look, he's smiling at me. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Do you have any words? Did you like the book? Do you think it was too long? Let's see if he likes the cover. This is what we're talking about. Do you like the cover? Yeah. Yeah. That's our boy. <laughs> well, thank you. Thanks for being here with me, both of you. I appreciate it on my pub date. It couldn't couldn't be a better launch for me. Thank you. Thanks for doing this interview and allowing Finn in it. <laughs> I love it. It's the best, the best. Our, our, four, our four interruptions to get through 25 minutes. <laughs> I know. It's true. He's talking to me. Okay. Congratulations on the book being out. Thank you. I'm just really excited for people to read it. Thank you, Thank you both of you. I love you. Finn, what do you what do you, what do you what do you want to say about the hi. book being out? Hi. <laughs> feel I think that was a hi. <laughs> medically assisted treatment for substance use. Yes complicated exactly exactly <laughs> how do you feel about safe injection sites yes how do you feel about harm reduction i did it yes i did it you get harm reduction okay absolutely okay Mwah. Mwah. love you love congratulations you congratulations on the book thank you welcome to the world white flag Thank you. Bye. Bye. Judy, mom, grandma. <laughs> <laughs>